Money in the Bank. On the whole, the show was not that bad. So why are so many people online complaining? What happened to make them so mad? And here we go. <laughs> Like gravity, all it takes is a little push. How you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Glad you stopped by. And if you're brand new, welcome. Grab a seat and stay a while. But do me a couple favors first. Go down and hit that subscribe button. Go next door, ring that bell. Make sure it says all so you know when the next video pops up. Hit that like button. And before you head out, drop a comment. And if you're one of the regulars here, welcome back for another round. I ask that you also hit that like button. And before you leave, drop a comment because YouTube does love the comments. And of course, Share the video out on all social media. Hey guys, before we get back to the video, I wanna do a quick little reminder for you. Go to the link down in the description of this video. It'll take you to my merch store over at Mixed Tees. Yeah, until the first weekend in August. That's right, SummerSlam. We'll be doing a fundraiser for the Starting Foundation of America. Because as you can tell, I have a speech impediment. So, we got shirt designs there. The original this design right here pretty darn cool then we got this design right here original design a little smaller but on the back we got this so yeah definitely grab yourself some merch again going to a good cause as a portion we'll be going to the stuttering foundation of america okay i'm done selling out back to the video all right money in the bank has come and gone and it did not disappoint well, it didn't disappoint me and others like myself who understand long-term booking the storytelling model that is employed by the WWE Chief Content Officer, Paul Triple H Levesque. But of course, there are quite a few folks out there who didn't get that immediate gratification and that they, they didn't get the result that they wanted. That's too bad. <laughs> now, of course, with this event, it comes down to the Money in the Bank ladder match winners, Drew McIntyre and Tiffany Stratton. So let me explain why these two decisions were not only the right decision, but the only decision to make. And here we go. Now we're going to start off with the men's Money in the Bank winner, Drew McIntyre. Now Drew had pre previously said that he was going to enter Money in the Bank. He was going to win Money in the Bank, and he was going to cash in during the Damian Priest-Seth Rollins match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. He entered Money in the Bank. He won Money in the Bank. Yes, the botched three-count spot, we'll leave that alone for a second, but he cashes in during the match, making it a triple threat, which means... There's no disqualifications. Any outside interference does not stop the match. This causes Drew to be attacked by CM Punk again. And this distraction, the chair shots, the belt shot, causes Damian Priest to hit the South of Heaven chokeslam onto Drew McIntyre to retain his championship. Now, there are a lot of folks who are upset that CM Punk screwed over not only Drew McIntyre for the third time, but he also screwed over Seth Rollins in the process. Yes, exactly. Now, let's just say that Drew or Seth won. You take the belt off of Damian Priest. You realize that in four weeks at SummerSlam, Drew or Seth 
is running into this guy, the ring general and king of the ring, Gunther. Where, bold prediction, folks, Gunther is walking out of SummerSlam, the world heavyweight champion, no matter who challenges him and is going on an extended title run, minimum 500 days. So you want to take the belt off of Damien just to put it on someone else for four weeks. Makes no sense. And as far as Drew getting screwed over for a third time, okay, great. This feud is white hot. White hot. And it's been brewing ever since the since before the Royal Rumble in January. CM Punk has not been in a ring for a match since the Royal Rumble. And we're already this white hot. This sets up the three premium live event feud structure. We have SummerSlam, then Bash at Berlin, and then finally, the newly confirmed in October, Bad Blood, which was the birthplace of the match stipulation that is designed to end feuds. Hell in a cell. Is it beginning to sink in? And now let's look at the women's Money in the Bank winner, that being the buff Barbie, the center of the universe, the one which I've been saying was going to be winning this for months now. Of course, I'm speaking of Tiffany Stratton. This was the only correct choice to make, but there have been a lot of folks, online chatter, and even some content creators who are upset with this decision. But why? I mean, for some reason, they wanted Chelsea Green to win the briefcase? But why? Okay, let's say that, hypothetically. Chelsea Green wins Money in the Bank. Now what? Who is she going to cash in on? she, she going to cash in on Liv Mo Morgan? No, because Liv's not dropping that title until the return of Rhea Ripley. So that leaves the WWE Women's Champion Bayley, who has a match at SummerSlam versus the Queen of the Ring, Nia Jax. So is Chelsea going to cash in on Bayley just to win the title, just to get squashed by Nia Jax in less than four weeks? Nah, 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 nah. Here's a bold prediction, folks that Nia Jax at SummerSlam is going to defeat Bayley and become the WWE Women's Champion. Either that night or the SmackDown after, the Queen of the Ring is going to get a face-to-face -face with the return of the Queen, Charlotte Flair. A mini feud is going to ensue and in their championship match, Charlotte Flair is going to win. That gives her 15 championships, one closer to tying her father, only to get cashed in on by Tiffany Stratton. This sets up a big marquee box office match in Las Vegas at WrestleMania 41, Tiffany Stratton versus Charlotte Flair. Now we're talking. <laughs> Speaking of WrestleMania, I did watch the documentary about the road to WrestleMania 40 entitled WrestleMania Behind the Curtain. I did a video about these events covered that's basically covered in this vi in this uh, documentary called WrestleMania. I'll leave a link for it in the description. You can c compare notes to it. But there's one moment that I want to highlight. That is where... Duh. Wayne The Rock Johnson became the Jennifer Lawrence of professional wrestling. If you know, you know. When addressing the backlash that Duh. Wayne created by sticking his nose where it wasn't needed and frankly wasn't wanted, and the subsequent hashtag we want Cody campaign from fans, this narcissistic, self-absorbed, suffering from delusions of grandeur chucklehead actually said 
that the creative decision to pivot back to Paul Levesque's original idea of Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns in the main event of night two to close out WrestleMania 40 was his idea. Bullshit. I mean, it's not even ego at this point with it, this guy. It's just sheer fucking hubris. But hey, these are just my thoughts. I'm going to turn it back over to you. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Be sure to check me out tonight, 7 p.m. Simulcasting here from Legion Talk. We're talking episodes three and four of season two of House of the Dragon. But yeah, thanks for stopping by, folks. Again, quick reminder before you head out the door, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell if you like the video, give it a thumbs up if you didn't like the video. Hey, thanks for sticking around this long. I appreciate that. And I will see you guys all very soon. Hope you had a great weekend. Have a wonderful week ahead of you. And always have fun. Hashtag keep talking. And always keep that smile on your face. <laughs> Toodles.